I had my intake manifold off this car's engine, it's a Ford, and while doing that I noticed a lot of the cabling didn't look in great condition. So I wanted to make a short video showing how easy it is to replace this protective sleeving. You can see here how some of these wires are exposed. Now this red one is the starter to alternator cable, and over here is the uh, engine management wiring loom where you can see all the little wires visible. So this isn't great, uh, as obviously these wires are now exposed and vulnerable to damage or wear. Um, and over here, this red cable is the battery cable, uh, also the one that goes to the starter. So all I'm going to do in this vid is replace the, the conduit. Um, it's really easy, uh, but it might look a little intimidating when you can't tell how the joins are done, or if you're thinking you need to disconnect cables to get the sleeve on. So you can get this protective sleeve, which has a split down its side from auto electricians uh, or online. Now I'll add links to Amazon and it is peanuts cheap. So get a few meters or however much you need. Uh, it'll come cut to length uh, in a coil like this. Uh, and you'll also need some tape to uh, properly finish junctions and hold the stuff in place. Now you need a special stuff called harness tape and it needs to be the variety intended for engine bay use, and that's to say high temperature. And it's also usually marketed as uh, abrasion resistant. Uh, then you need to prepare the existing cabling or wiring for the replacement sleeve, which basically means removing anything remaining. Uh, in my case, I had bits and pieces of the old stuff, which had become brittle and come to pieces, uh, especially next to the engine here above the transmission. So I just had to uh, pick all of that free and remove it. Then once you've got a bare cable, you can uh, slip some of the new sleeve on and get it into the correct position at one end, whichever's easiest, and then just measure to fit based on where you want it to mate up to. Then cut it with a pair of scissors to the correct length when you're ready. And clean up the cut if necessary. Then you need your tape, and you just join the two sections together by wrapping the tape around and around while stretching the tape out a little bit so that the elasticity of it is helping to hold it all together. And the tape sticks best to itself, by the way, rather than the uh, plastic sleeve. So you want the last wrap to be against the previous layers, not the, uh, not the plastic conduit. Then you give it a good squeeze, and it should look something like this. Now it may be helpful to disconnect the terminal of a cable. Uh, in my case here, it was going to make the job a lot easier by removing the battery cable. Uh, by the way, you can see that the negative is already disconnected. You should always do that before taking off the positive on a battery. And uh, anyway, with it removed, I can easily tape wrap the battery terminal end of the sleeve. and uh, voila, renewed cable protector. And uh, here I'm vacuuming up all of the little bits of plastic from the old sleeve that disintegrated. And uh, this section of the wiring harness was more torn than gone completely, so I needed to cut away the old damaged part, uh, and I basically removed it all up to the nearest junctions in the harness. And then with the old stuff gone, and nice neat ends to mate up to, I could get the new section in place. Then it's the same story with the tape, just wrap it around the joints in such a way that you get a good finish. And you could do something similar on the junctions if you wanted, because the tape is flexible and stretchy, you can form it into whatever shape is needed, so you can handle you know, T-junctions or Y-junctions or crosses or whatever it is that's, that's required. Okay, so there's some wiring that should now stay protected for, uh, you know, hopefully another 10 years or so. Hope that was useful for somebody out there. Have fun.